Hey guys, how you doing? This is Manga Etc. And I'm here today to bring you the review for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 298. But first things first, I want to address something that happened within the last chapter, which I completely missed. And that was the fact that amongst all the people that All For One was releasing, one of them was actually Overhaul. Yeah, that caught me by surprise a little bit. But when I deeped it... I was like, hmm? Then he loses his quirk, I had to do a little background check, and I was like, and I was like yeah, yeah, he, he lost his quirk, like, he's pretty much useless to the series. Yes, I know we have Eri, you know, Eri Chan, you know, Miss, Miss Rewind, but he should be useless, and in all honesty, I have, I have, uh, depends on the circumstances, but I've got this thing about recycling old villains, so... Overhaul is free. Do I want him back? Not necessarily. So I hope he stays irrelevant. And if he has to play a part and ask to come, ask to come, and things to come, let it be sh- let it be short and sweet, please, please, <laughs> please, short and sweet. But moving on to weapons of this chapter is we're basically still in the aftermath, really looking at three people. Bakugo. Shoto and well, Deku. <laughs> he gets like a panel appearance within this chapter, but we are essentially looking at these three. And the most, um, the most interesting to me is Shoto, because he's basically realizing that Dabby, he could have turned out like Dabby if things were a bit differently. If Deku never came and you know, save, save, save Shoto. He could have ended up being like Dabby. And the way I see it is that Shoto seems to be in the mindset of that he has to be the one to deal with Dabby. And now I say deal with. Because that's essentially what I think it is. Um, From Shoto's talking, I never felt like... Shoto wanted to get Dabi to turn around, see the error in his ways, and quote unquote maybe become a hero. And why I think that's important, and why I think that this is the way um, the route we're taking, is because when we look at when Deku talks about certain people, more and more recently, um, Shiggy, more recently Shiggy, when he was talking about how um, Shiggy looked like he needed to be saved. So it's you no, know, it's, it's like, so the mangaka knows what he um he, what he's foreshadowing sometimes within his writing. So, I kind of feel like, right now anyway, Shoto is in the mindset of he needs to defeat, and like maybe not kill. I think that's a bit too much, but that would be the um, the worst case scenario. Shoto feeling like he needs to kill his bro, but I definitely feel like he has no intention of saving him right now and for me this was the most interesting thing to come out of this chapter so we have Bakugo who's also woken up within this chapter and he's basically worried about his friends you know, you know what happened everybody, is everybody good and upon finding out about Deku about his current predicament he's um, he wants to rush over to see him as soon as we, and he actually says, Deku, you better not die on me. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. But when I stopped thinking that, uh, you just got to realise how far Bakugo has come, really. He's really done a 360, no, a 180. I think 360 would be a bit too much, because that, mean, that would mean he went back to how it was. But yeah, he's done a 180. Because obviously he started off as a bully to Deku, but now they are buddy buddy, the buddy buddy, the, the close, the tight, the understand. So we have that within the chapter, and obviously we see that Deku, um, so there's no signs of getting up. We also do see a razor head within this chapter, and he's worried about his students for a play, but um, you know, he's got his injuries as well. Will he be able to do hero work still? I mean, there's people, there's characters in One Piece who lose limbs and st- they're still good to go. So, like, what are you saying, the reason What? Losing a leg is going to keep you from hero working, bro. So, there is that. And the last thing I want to mention is that how I have mentioned, I think, for the last two chapters, 
how I give a round of applause to Mr. One for All. I mean, all for one, sorry. Um, for using the initiative, using just the aftermath period to go after his main body. But he doesn't stop there. He also attacks, I think it was six or seven other prisons. And I'm like, yeah. This guy knows what he's doing. So another round of applause for him. And yeah, and so a round of applause for that. But I also want to say what I said last week, which is that because all of these people, because all of these villains are being freed, I hope not all of them are going straight running to um running to one for all for one and being his um like subordinates and all that uh i said last week that it seemed like everybody that was freed from tartarus seemed to have worked for the league of villains at some point that can't be the case for all of these prisons it, it, it simply cannot there's no way in hell and I don't mind if some of them are grateful for being released and join the League of Villains, but I want at least a couple, three, three, at least three, three max. I'll, I'll settle for two. Three max, I'll settle for two, where we have um, just new villains that can have fresh arcs, that can have a, sp- um, a new spin on things, which are not necessarily filler, but they just take the story a different way so we're not always focusing on the main threat which is the league of villains because there would all there will always be other villains in the world so yeah that's me that's me i'm going to give this chapter a three star rate and a call it a review like always guys i'm asking for your thoughts and opinions if you haven't already please subscribe to my youtube channel but most importantly take care have a nice day